Hello and welcome to Natural World Facts. I'm on location here at Richmond Park in London, looking for wildlife. At the heart of London, at the very centre of the busy crowds and heavy traffic that worms its way through the city from dawn till dusk, there is an unexpected refuge to be found. An oasis of life, hidden away beneath the towering skyscrapers. Here, an abundance of wildlife can be found, each day playing out a majestic display of conflict, beauty and power. These animals just behind me here, passing through this woodland, are red deer, the most common deer species found in this park. And they are everywhere. There are two main species that can be found in Richmond Park. There's the red deer, the larger species, and the fallow deer, which are much smaller. As the UK's largest land mammals, Red deer are truly majestic creatures. The males, known as stags, develop a large set of antlers that grow with age and are shed and regrown each year. While the females, or hinds, lack antlers and tend to be smaller. Red deer certainly leave their mark on the landscape. Nearly all of the trees in the park have a distinctive browse line at 1.5 metres above the ground caused by deer eating all the leaves and twigs that grow below that height. Their constant grazing on grasses, shoots and shrubs prevents saplings from growing, maintaining the largest area of lowland acid grassland in London, hosting much of the park's diversity. Thanks to the deer grazing over centuries, Richmond Park has become a specialised habitat. Aside from the scattered areas of forested land, much of the wood in the park lies decaying on the ground. The only trees that do grow here are those that have been standing on this ground for centuries, standing tall as ancient sentinels to watch over the landscape. The park is home to some truly ancient trees and they provide a habitat to an abundance of wildlife. However, they are just as important dead as they are alive. One of the main reasons that Richmond Park is home to so much wildlife is the fact that there is so much of this, dead, decaying wood. This is vital for establishing the basis of any ecosystem, the life of the undergrowth the bugs, the insects, the worms, the ant colonies, all of the creatures at the bottom of the food chain that allow areas like this to become so diverse. Mosses and lichen cover much of the dead wood found in the park, serving as a vital habitat for soil organisms that make up the detrital food web. There are over 400 types of fungi found in Richmond Park which have a vital role to play in the ecosystem here. Their two ecological roles 
the decomposition of other organisms and providing a food source for other living things. As saprophytes, they can live on dead matter, such as rotting wood. They break this down and obtain energy from organic compounds. Many plants depend on fungi decomposing and recycling decaying matter in order to supply nutrients to their roots, meaning the food web would be incomplete without them. The mushrooms you see in the park are only the fruiting bodies of what are mostly underground fungi. Living among the moss on one particular decaying log, a colony of ants makes its home. Bees are Myrmica ruginidis, an aggressive species that are able to deliver a mildly irritant sting. Here, a colony of nearly 300 individuals is tending to their developing larvae kept hidden under the bark. Ants also have a crucial role here. As they move and tunnel into the wood and earth, they turn and aerate the soil. This allows water and oxygen to reach plant roots, helping them to grow. Not too far away, a colony of black wood ants inhabits a similar piece of old wood. Beetles live here too, like this violet ground beetle hunting for soft-bodied prey to eat such as the many wood lice that can be found eating away at the wood. Aside from decomposing organic waste and keeping the environment clean, ants are also important in seed dispersal, as they take seeds down into their tunnels to eat them, although the seeds often sprout and grow new plants. Similar to the drama that plays out each day upon the African savanna, the life here exists in perpetual conflict. There are the hunters and the hunted. The most numerous prey animals dwell in the park's countless wood piles. These are woodlice, detrivores, the garbage collectors of the soil, serving an important but often overlooked purpose. Without them, plants would have less access to nutrients in spring, which would slow down their growth. The animal here snacking on the unfortunate isopods is the UK's most widespread toad species, the common toad. They populate the park in their thousands, roaming far and wide to hunt for insects, and embarking on a quest each spring to return to the exact place where they themselves were spawned. Down here in a dried up riverbed, it is the perfect place where toads could be found hunting because the soil is still damp and full of worms and even leeches. It's under logs like this where you can find a wealth of wildlife. There's everything under here. There's wood lice, spiders, huge slugs, and even a little common toad. 
common frogs live here too, among many newt species that populate a number of the park's 30 bodies of standing water. Being home to such an incredibly diverse array of life, Richmond Park is a true sanctuary for wildlife at the heart of an otherwise sleepless and bustling city. If ever you visit the park, take care of the nature that inhabits it. Respect the wild deer and keep your distance, particularly in autumn when the rut between males begins. And don't disturb the decaying wood, as it is a sanctuary for rare species like the larvae of protected stag beetles. But above all else, enjoy the beauty of this place, for it is like nowhere else in London. <laughs>